Linen Boards presents Retro Computing using FPGAs Part 3 In this video we'll look a little more in depth at our build of Grant Searle's CompuKit UK 101. We're going to start taking a look at a minimal build which for me is nostalgic because that's pretty much the computer I bought. Before we take a look at Grant's design let's take a look at the original Superboard 2 block diagram from the SAMS manual. Here's the block diagram for the Superboard 2 from the SAMS manual. At the center of the design is a 6502 microprocessor. To the left is the polled keyboard. To the right is an address selector for the video memory which is dual ported. There was a couple of ROMs on the thing, a monitor ROM, which is the Segmon we saw earlier and we'll see again later. Basic language ROM and uh, system memory unit was the program memory. And then there was counting and selection logic for selecting the video memory to be either accessed from the microprocessor or from the video. Grant goes to a fantastic level of detail on his web page describing the design and how he came up with it. The 6502 microprocessor is based on a core found on opencores.org. This is the daughter board that we made that sits on top of the FPGA card and implements Grant's minimal hardware interfaces. To the left is the composite video connector. In the center left is the PS2 keyboard six pin header. And to the right is the four pin serial header. Grant's design features a simple set of external connections. These features include composite monochrome video output, Monochrome composite video is created with a simple summer circuit that takes two output pins from the FPGA and one of them has sync and one of them has data and by summing them together you can produce a pretty decent composite video signal. Connections for a PS2 keyboard. We purchased a panel mount PS2 female connector on eBay and at the end of this cable was a five pin pin header strip and we replaced that with a six pin that matched our card. And a serial port for uploading and downloading programs from a host computer. Connection to the serial interface is done with a FTDI USB to TTL part. The bottom of the card has a single 2x14 header which is 0.1 pitch to connect down to the FPGA card. We had one small problem with our card which wasn't too obvious and took a little while to fix. It's that the pin here um, next to the ground is, does not indicate what's on that pin. And actually we thought ground was on both. But it turns out that on that pin is the reset. And so we were shorting reset to ground. Uh, once we cleared that off our card, uh, things started working great. And here it is, the completed minimal setup. I don't know about you, but what I miss the most about the retro computing days was turning on the power switch and watching the monitor come on instantly. Yeah, you had to wait for the cold start or the warm start. But there you go. Don't you miss those good old days? And wow, you had to write programs that were pretty efficient when you only had 3,000 327 bytes of space for your basic program. Thanks for watching our video and if you enjoyed it don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.